So as part seven of our uh, playground modeling uh, project, we're actually getting into the assembly portion since we've got all of the parts created. So to get us started, we're actually going to do what are called sub-assemblies. Uh, we've got a lot of complexity in here. We've got a lot of different pieces that need to be fitting together. So we're going to take it into some uh, bite-sized portions, uh, something a little bit easier to manage. So in this sub-assembly video, we're going to go ahead and take care of the monkey bar system. Okay, So we know we've got four different models being used multiple times to go ahead and create kind of the ladder, the monkey bridge, and uh, kind of the other gateways. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are a couple of things we need to be mindful of. So we've already got the monkey bar, the upright monkey bar, the upright monkey ladder, and we've got the monkey pull itself. Now, in each of these, okay, one of the things that you need to do is uh, make sure that it's saving. So even though it's cloud-based, we want to make sure that we're keeping uh, different versions taken care of. Okay, So use this as an opportunity to double check, make sure that the pieces are working, and then what we can do is we can actually make sure that we've got a current version. Okay, So we've got the starting point where it knows that it's one of the versions. We know that we've done some work on it. We can actually see the changes that have happened. But by clicking on creating a version, that's basically making sure that we've got a saved version. Okay, So we can go ahead and create that. We can go back to our um, full assembly pieces. So having checked our files, uh, kind of the next step is for us to go ahead and start creating the assembly file itself. So in this case, this is going to be the see, monkey bar sub-assembly. And rather than creating another part, we're going down into the assembly portion and we're going to go ahead and start inserting the different pieces that we need from other documents. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and get started with the upright monkey uh, ladder, part one. We know that we're going to need to have the upright monkey bar itself. And then we're going to need the monkey bar on its own. Now, right now, I only have uh, put in one of each. We're going to, whoops. Ah, fortunately, we've got the restore in there. Um, all right, so going into the assembly portion, we can see that the ladder is going to be on one side. Um, when you have that kind of open gap, the upright portion on the other side goes all the way up. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the monkey bar itself that goes on top. Okay? So what that means is we're going to have to do a rotation of this piece. We'll need to fix one of these. And then we'll have to go ahead and start applying the assembly for the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and fix the uh, ladder portion, or sorry, the um, upright monkey bar portion and then we're going to go ahead and modify so I've clicked on the uh, ladder portion and I'm going to go ahead and make it rotate 180 degrees okay. and then we can click and drag to go ahead and relocate it and then we need to kind of do the same thing for the uh, the monkey bar so instead of 180 degrees we're only going to do 90 so at this point, we need to go ahead and start applying some of the constraints. Okay? Now, most of what I'm going to use are going to be the, um, the polar constraints. Uh, we have a bit more variety in uh, Onshape than we do in some of the other programs. But the planar ones basically say that uh, where we're going to glue them together effectively, uh, where they're going to be touching uh, face to face, and we can kind of work from there. Okay? So starting with the fixed one, I'm going to say that this side is going to be parallel, or at least in touch with uh, this. And one of the things that I'm not a big fan of an on shape is it's going to have to be corrected and solved a few times. Um, don't be alarmed when you see these 
uh, objects moving around. That's the idea of kind of what the uh, constraints do. They will force relocation. Um, but as we get one on each plane, each axis, so the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ uh, plane, we'll go ahead and eliminate all of the degrees of freedom. Yeah. So I know that uh, that goes ahead and locks that in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the side surface. And then the last one, this is where we'll go ahead and use the view cube to go ahead and say that the top of that bar and the bottom of the monkey bar will go ahead and get solved. Okay. So if we go back to the home view, we click on solve, we'll see that it goes ahead and kind of lines itself correctly. We now do kind of the same thing. Uh, we can say that the edge of that is going to be parallel to that, that the top of that rail is going to be touching down here. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm selecting planes and not just lines. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and say that the surface on the right goes ahead and applies. And then when we solve that, it goes ahead, settles everything out and we have kind of the fixed constraint. Okay? So you'll notice that for the three different objects, uh, we've used six planes to go ahead and eliminate all the degrees of freedom. The way that we can test that is if we uh, hit escape a couple of times, we shouldn't be able to click and drag and move anything. Okay? So between the fixed object and all of the constraints that we've applied, that's pretty much now locked in place. Now, one of the nice things about uh, Onshape is that we can also uh, duplicate these. Okay? So we can actually uh, copy the three items, and then we can go ahead and paste them. So paste the three objects. Okay? And what happens okay, is that, let's see, make sure we're getting the right one. Okay? So, if I fix one of these, let's see if it actually translates. Yeah, so it's grouped them together for us, okay? Which means that the next part of this assembly is we need to go ahead and uh, make sure that we're getting the monkey bars themselves in place. So, we're going back to the insertion and other documents and in the playground, and then the monkey pull right here okay. and I'm only going to place one we'll copy and paste the rest but because we can use uh, some of the pattern tools we don't necessarily need to apply all of the holes that we've got we'll be able to create some patterns and some copy and paste so the first one of these let's make sure we go ahead and unfix that one so we've got one that moves and then one that doesn't okay uh, good practice for when you're taking care of some of the assemblies. Now we're going to use the uh, cylindrical mate. Um, it's designed for going ahead and putting poles into holes. And I can say that I need the top of this to go ahead and be constrained to top of that. And I can change direction. Um, I think I actually want that direction changed. We'll go ahead and move the whole assembly over a little bit further. But I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Let's see, uh, to go ahead and see. Oh, need to get out of that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab that part, copy it. That way, we're going to be able to go ahead and paste a couple more of them in as needed. So let's see if that's fully constrained, and it's not, okay? Um, not the hugest surprise, but what we can go ahead and do is we can apply kind of the same solar of planar mate to the surface of the two objects, okay? And, okay, that should go ahead and lock that in place. Notice it's not moving out of that piece. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and apply the same concept. Um, go ahead and use the cylindrical mate. Okay. And I'm going to say that I need the top line of that. Okay. And that needs to actually go into, thinking about my orientation, it needs to go back into that location. Okay. So what should work Try that again. Sometimes these will not necessarily work as uh, desired, but one, two, we will solve the problem. Okay, and yeah, that's going to look a little funky. Um, part of it is that still has some degrees of freedom so that it can rotate around. Um, we'll go ahead and address that, especially as if we get the other bars in place. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and take care of the other bars first. So mostly using the cylindrical mate tool at this point that we need that circle to go into place in that hole. Same thing for this one. We'll change our rotation around. A few moments later. We know that that's still rotating around. Okay. So let's try the cylindrical mate again. And identifying the surface that we need it to be connecting to. Escape, let's see, that's still moving around a little bit. So let's try and go ahead and do planar on it. Okay, that constraint looks good. We still have some movements of some of these. Okay, try planar, let's see on the top. Okay. That seems to go ahead and work. Let that solve. Okay. So at this point, okay, and sometimes you do need to just try it again, everything is deselected. I click and drag. And it, we're not having any of the parts moving around. Okay, that's ultimately the test for making sure that you have a proper assembly being completed. Now, the last little part of this, uh, in terms of our assembly, is we're going to go ahead and use the assembly linear pattern. Okay, so what that basically means is we'll select the bar, we will select a line that we wanted to roughly follow that will stay parallel and um, in line. And then we need to set the distance. So in this case, we can go back to our technical drawings or we can know that uh, for the uh, top bar, we had a 12 inch spacing. And then we needed to have, well, one, change the direction. And then we know that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. And we can go ahead and have it go ahead and put all of the monkey bars in. So while we had to spend some time working on making sure that the assembly was working for our part of the problem, using the linear pattern and the dimensions that we already knew, make it a lot easier to go ahead and finish up this assembly. It's not necessarily as tedious as it might seem. We can repeat the same thing for the, uh, the vertical line. We can say that I need to use the assembly we're going to set a direction vertically. We know in this case it's a 10 inch spacing. <clears throat> and changing direction, we know that we've got two, four, six of those to take care of on this side. And then on the opposite side, same deal. Okay. We've got the bar. We know that we want to have it as a pattern. We know it's a 10 inch spacing. 
we know that in this case we've got seven of them. No, eight. Okay. Check our direction, and we're able to go ahead and complete that part of the monkey bar set. So make sure you're kind of saving it, um, having created a version, uh, to make sure that it's keeping track of where we're at. You can leave a comment if you need to. But if we go back, hit escape a couple of times, click and drag on every piece that you can possibly see, shake it, see if the mouse moves it, and in this case, we see that it is fairly solidly assembled. So that's good enough for the monkey bar portion. And then in part eight, we'll take care of some other parts of the playground.